Chris Stone by Coach Tools. Today I'm here with Coach Andrew Cohen. Thanks for coming on, Coach. Hey, thanks for having me. Excited to get going. So, Coach Cohen and I, today we're going to be talking a little bit about his career, his advice for other coaches, and, and how he thinks that data can help coaches in today's in today's world of coaching. So, can you just share with the audience a little bit about your background, Coach? Sure. So, I was a college football coach for 22 years, uh, Division One, Two, and Three at schools like Columbia University, Bucknell University, Fordham, and Stony Brook. Um, I was also a coach in the NESCAC, which is a high academic Division Three conference with Hamilton and Bowdoin College. So, and now for the past 10, geez, almost 11 years now, I've been working my own company, which is Get Recruited Consulting, where we help the student athletes get into college. So, so tell me more about like your experience coaching. Like, what was that? What was that like? And then how has that helped you in the world of business now? Great question. So it was a, you know, it, at times a very rewarding profession, a lot of work, a lot of hours go into these college coaches. Uh, but it's definitely helped me with my business because with 22 years of college coaching, the amount of contacts that I made has been, you know, thousands and thousands of college coaches. And along with that, the information I say to people, it's like I had a 22 year, year internship for my current uh, job now. So I, I know all the rules and the regulations. I know how do you approach a coach? How do you not approach a coach? So I, I don't see how you would have that experience if you don't, if you didn't have the opportunity like I did to coach at the collegiate level. Yeah. So. And also just for the audience watching, Coach Cohen and I, we've been in having conversations over the past few weeks just about how him and I can collaborate with Coach Tools and get recruited. So one of the stories he was telling me recently was with an old offensive line coach from the New York Giants. Can you just share with the audience about that story? Yeah, so I'm an old guy. I'm 52 years old. So his name was Denny Marson, and he was a defensive line coach. And I went there because I, part of my career, I coached defensive line. And it really hit home when he said, he's like, if you don't chart everything, Right. And back then, everything was on a pencil and paper, you know. Um, but if you don't keep track of how many times you're reached or how many times you're kicked out. So his big story was just that he was talking to a coach and the coach didn't think he had a problem getting reached. And he said, do you chart it? And he said, no. And then the next thing you know, they chart it for that game and they got reached. I, I don't know, remember how many times, but maybe six, eight, ten times. And he's like, so you see, you do have a problem getting reached. So I think that's the big thing with with you guys is having the ability to to keep track of everything that happens. And then you realize what you do well or what you don't do well. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing. It's like, how can you improve what you don't measure? Right. And yes, just having conversations with guys. And from my own personal experience, you know, it's it's something that a lot of coaches, they, they do it, but sometimes they just don't have the time to do it properly. And can you also talk about that and like what, what that was like for you? Well, when, when you say properly, I think the bottom line is they, a lot of coaches, even to this day, don't have an exact system of how they're going to track what they're doing well, what they're not doing well, whether it's by position, whether it's by a whole unit, whether it's by we're comparing the different defensive tackles at play and finding out who's good at what. And who's not and putting the best players in the best situation possible. So I, I think that sometimes we just assume this kid's good because he's big, he's strong and he moves well. But, you know, are you really evaluating very specifically what he does well compared to another guy? And you might find out that they're both good, but it's just situationally, you know, put them on the field in the right at the right times, whether it's by down and distance, whether it's by tendencies, whatever it might be. If you go real detailed like that, I think you're giving your players and your team a, a lot better chance to succeed. Yeah. And, you know, I think every coach wants to be able to do that, but it comes down to the time bottleneck. So from your experience, like what, how do you know what to prioritize as a coach? Well, I think, you know, specifically as a defensive coach, because that's what I'll be talking about now, because I was a head coach, but most of my career, I was a all my career, I was a defensive guy. 
And I just think that each week it, it changes, you know, but you have to have a base philosophy. Like our philosophy was we're going to stop the run and we're not going to let up big plays in the passing game. We're going to keep the ball in front of us. Right. So now what are you doing to achieve those goals? Schematically, you know, we got to stop the run, but also you should be putting certain players on the field that are going to give you the best chance to stop the run versus when we're trying to keep the ball in front of us and we're doing the passing game. So now putting your best pass rushers on the field, putting your best cover guys on the field. So I think that there's a lot more situational now um, recruiting that is not recruiting. I apologize, but, but coaching and putting in the right personnel for the right situation is vital today, but I don't know if everyone's studying you know, how do they do that? And what, yeah. you know, when and where do we put certain guys in? Yeah. And that's the big thing. It's like, you know, just on really truly understanding like when and where and, and who are we putting in given like a certain scenario? Cause just to your point, you know, you might have somebody who's, who's really good at, at stopping the run, but vice versa. Like maybe he's not good at like pass rushing. Like, like for me as a player, like I was, I was really good versus the run. And I just wasn't that athletic and I, I wasn't a great pass rusher as a defensive lineman. And, you know, I, it's, I think it's crucial for coaches to understand that. I do too. And I, and, you know, obviously you're not going to, if, if he's a great run player, you're not always going to know when they're running the ball, but you can definitely have some uh, tendencies by the offense, whether it's by personnel formation or uh, down in distance, or even the quarter of the game, even where, what, where they put the ball in the hash, whatever it might be. But I think if you're not putting the right players out there at the right times, I, I, I think you're making a big mistake. Yeah, I do. And that, and that really just comes down to like self-scouting and, and really just like grading like with, with what we're doing, right? Yeah, but again, if you're not using some exact system that's in place to find out all right, so let's just say we're, we're doing defensive tackles. You know, who are the top guys versus pass? Who are the top guys versus the run? Who are the most productive? You know, I think sometimes a guy makes a big play and then you assume that he's the best guy and you don't realize it, it's over time. It's consistency that you're looking for. And if you don't track everything and have some type of system in place where you're evaluating that, I think you're making a big mistake. Yeah. Yeah. And what advice would you give maybe like yourself going back 20 years when you were just starting off coaching? I, and I apologize. Advice for what specifically? I'm sorry. Yeah, just in general. Like what advice would you give yourself to like better prepare yourself? Like if if you could know what what mistakes you were going to make or, or things like that, what what would you tell yourself back then? Um, that's a tough, that's a tough question. I think that, um, you know, I think that I didn't do as good a job of what we're talking about right now. I think I made assumptions off of just my memory of certain plays. And, and now I realize that you, no human can do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You have to have an exact system. So I would say working hard to always put the best players situationally on the field. I know that, like, for instance, maybe this will help as an analogy. In the NFL, it's all about matchups. If the offense can get this receiver on this cover guy, then they feel like they've won, and that's the biggest thing they have to do. So why can't we do that for all positions and put them in a position? If we know that it's a 70% chance that they're going to run the ball because it's this down in distance and they're in this personnel, then let's get our best run players on the field. So – I don't think I I definitely didn't. I schematically would call defenses that fit the situation pretty well, but I don't think I used substitutionally the right guys. And I think that especially if, if you're not talking about Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia, where a lot of their players can do it all, you know, but but the lower levels, even lower level division one and down, you know, a lot of times you're gonna have players that can only do certain things really well. And other things, they don't do nearly as well. But you have another guy that can that has the other skills. So I think you'd be making a, a big mistake if you didn't find out how do I, you know, how do I track that, which we can now, 
And then from there, you know, how do I get those players on the field in the right situations at all positions, not just defensive line, linebacker for sure, secondary for sure, all positions, and then vice versa around the other way offensively. Yeah. So I won't, we're not even getting into that because I'm definitely a defensive minded guy, but same type of thing. Yeah. So what what would you tell the audience would be like some of the top benefits from a coach's perspective of of coach tools? I think that, you know, I, him and I, have, you know, we've just and I have spent a lot of time looking at it and, you know, putting it on the screen and, and seeing what it all can do. I think, one, you're you're going to be more efficient. You're going to save time because you're not going to have to write it down, then transfer it to someone else and then put it in a computer and figure out the calculator, how much it is and all that, what's your percentages. So I think convenience is a big thing. Having it all in one location is a big thing. I think that having a true understanding of what you're really good at and what you need to improve, it's somewhat of a, a self scout by players, by, uh, by position, by the whole defensive unit. And it could be anything from technique grades or tracking, whether it's reach blocks or reacting to pass, whatever it might be. There's, there's just unlimited things that you can track. And, you know, you have to make a decision. You can't do everything. But uh, I know that when I coached, I, I wanted to, when the season was over, watch every film as a staff, look at every statistic we could and find out what are the things we needed to work on the most. I think this tool can really help you find out, you know, hey, we do have a problem tackling. We miss tackles in the open field on a regular basis. Or I looked at it and we threw deep balls this many times on offense and we only completed this many, but we got sacked a lot. I just think there's, there's unlimited things that you, you can look at and find out as a whole, you know, as a president of a company, what, what, what do we do well and what do we need to do better? And then how are we going to get better at it? Yeah. Well, thank you very much, coach. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate you having on. Thanks. Thank you very much. Have a great day. everyone. <laughs>